season of the Seraph is very mediocre. It's the same grind all over again with Bungie drip feeding content until the next season or major DLC. The formula has not aged well and it's starting to get old. The season of the Haunted was already underwhelming with reusing the Leviathan and introducing the content in the form of reissued Menagerie weapons, and Season of Plunder was even worse with a very poor ending towards the season. Not only that, Airborne Effectiveness put a giant dent into the gunplay, loose skill-based matchmaking being introduced turned off a lot of PvP players, Arc 3.0 was heavily bugged, exotics and a whole weapon class was disabled for weeks due to a bug. Triumphs and Holiday Sale progress was halted due to bugs, and it takes Bungie weeks to fix these issues that plague the core game. It also doesn't help that there aren't many actual content updates during the season, and players are only getting a few new activities, and that's it. And don't tell me weapon balances are content, because they're not. Players are left with seasonal activities, then a few weeks later the dungeon or raid, and recently it's only been recycled raids from Destiny 1, and then a final mini event at the end of the season. The dungeons you have to pay for. For some reason, Bungie's allowed to get away with charging people over $100 for DLC because apparently it was a great idea to lock content like dungeons behind the deluxe edition. Alright, so I'm editing this video right now and I completely forgot about the dungeon pass, but it does not matter because if you were to buy a dungeon pass and buy your season separately, you'd still end up spending almost the same amount of money, so it really doesn't matter. I know some people are going to be wondering like, hey, you forgot about dungeon pass, but no, I just, it, it literally just does not matter at all. The price is almost the same. If anything, you're saving $10 from the deluxe, so yeah, it's really unfortunate. And people will still defend this saying it's expensive to produce content, as fresh as the seasons are and Bungie is not profiting off the season, so we have to pay $120 each year so the game can be funded. So we're just gonna forget that Bungie has done branding events with Epic Games, Ubisoft, has been bought by Sony and has received a billion dollar deal with them, makes 10 times the profit off Eververse resets, and you know, still getting more money from holiday discounts from DLCs, Bungie is making an absolute killing. I know this is going to be an unpopular take, but hear me out. I think the seasons should be free. Everything about them should be straight up free. The only thing I can see being locked behind a paywall is the season pass, and I believe it should be reworked so it functions as a battle pass akin to Fortnite, which is cosmetics, nothing else. Free to play games and live service games would make way more money off of microtransactions alone. GTA 5, League of Legends, and CSGO, hell, even Valorant makes so much money off their battle pass and skins. If Destiny went 100% free to play with their seasons, and not locking content behind the season pass and deluxe edition, I can 100% guarantee you that the game would do better in terms of financial stability and player count. They would make more money by making the content easier to access to all players without forcing a stupid $120 paywall with a deluxe edition. Actually, no, let me show you the proof. Bungie made a deal with Sony that was reportedly worth around $3.6 billion. It is stated that Bungie's biggest asset right now is Destiny 2, racking in an estimated $200 million in revenue. Destiny 2 Eververse back in 2020 has made around $3.3 million in revenue from just two months alone. This was from Season of Arrival, and that number has surely gone way up ever since as the game has received a lot of hype and attention because of Witch Queen and Season of the Risen. Speaking of Witch Queen, Witch Queen has gotten over 1 million pre-orders. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt and just assume that each and every single one of those pre-orders were pre-orders for the base edition of the game. This totals up to about $70 million from pre-orders of Witch Queen alone. This doesn't include orders after the DLC was released. And mind you, Witch Queen was positively received amongst the community and critics, so it's gotten more sales after its release. During the first week of each season, Bungie releases new ornaments for exotics and armors in the Eververse shop. It's safe to assume that they would make a significant amount from players buying these items, well over a million dollars. And it would be safe to assume that Bungie keeps about 70% of the profits made, and the rest goes to respective stores like PSN and Xbox Live. And actually, let's calculate this. At the time of recording this video, these are the current stats for these ornaments which currently cost silver and are not in the bright dust rotation, meaning you have to pay to get these ornaments. 
They all cost 700 silver, which is equal to $7, but because you have to spend $10 or more to actually get 700 silver, I'll price each of these skins at $10. The Osteostriga ornament was purchased 3,336 times, which equals to 33,360. The Calyptra at 5,045, which equals to 50,450. The Galar form at 5,711, at 57,110. The Trinity Gull at 2,950, which equals to 29,500. The Knight's Elegy at 2,234, which equals to 22,340. The Solar Astro Blade at 1,535, which equals to 15,350. Open Hands at 605, which equals to 6,050. Noble Burden at 1,050, which equals to 10,500. Three Glowing Dawns at 2,950, which equals to 29,500. In total, these weapon ornaments have made $220,800 in a single day. Less than a day to be exact, as the time of this recording, these calculations was at 10 p.m. Eastern, a mere 10 hours after the season has been released, and this number will only go higher. Obviously, it will plateau at some point, but for now, it will keep going up, up, and up, especially at the start of a season. And this is just the weapons. You know what? Let's go further. Let's calculate the armors this season. Warmind IO doesn't show the bundles count as it just shows the armor, and if we were to divide the cost of the pack by the amount of armor, this would equate to 300 silver per item. However, you cannot purchase 300 silver, and the minimum amount is 500 silver for $6.25. To keep the math simple, I'll use the arithmetic mean, and to calculate this, you must take the numbers and divide them by the amount. So in this case, we have 7,134, plus 7,135, plus 7,136, plus 7,219, plus 7,220. And this adds up to 35,844. And if we divide this number by 5, which equals to 7,168.8. But let's just round this number up by 1 to 7,169. So this is the average number of Universal Dynamo ornaments sold for the Hunter class. But because you Destiny fanboys are so relentless in your crusade to defend Bungie at all costs, I will personally remove 100 sales from this number, so our new value would be 7,069. Okay? Good. Each bundle costs 1,500 silver, which equals to $18.74. Now you can't actually buy 1,500 silver, as you have to buy either the 1 1,000 silver pack or a 1 500 silver pack, or a 2,000 silver pack which costs over $20, but I'll just use a lower value anyways. So this bundle will cost exactly $18.74, not including tax because I'll keep the calculation simple since different countries have different tax rates and such. So that is 7,069 times 1874, which equals to $132,473.06. This is off the Hunter bundle only, and this doesn't include the Warlock or the Titan packages. And this number is the amount of revenue made before getting taxed from the digital stores. The Titan and Warlock sold more as well, but I'm not going to include them in this video to make it too long. I'll leave the numbers on screen when I take the screenshot, feel free to calculate this for yourself, but I can assure you they have made a lot of money off the first 12 hours alone of this season just from the Eververse store. And this doesn't include the players who end up buying the season pass for $10. I can't blame these players because nowhere does it say you need to purchase the deluxe to enjoy the full seasons throughout the year, so some players may not know and will end up spending the extra money. Let's also not forget, Sony takes 30% of all sales and microtransactions via its online store. Microsoft takes 30% as well. Valve also takes 30%, but they take less if the sales are higher, so this number can vary. So that's a total cut of 60% from Sony and Microsoft, with Steam being somewhere between 10 to 30%, but it's safe to assume that's probably on the lower side due to Destiny 2 selling well on Steam. But even with that cut, Remember, these numbers were from the first day of the season. They will make more money throughout the rest of the season. To further put this into perspective, in less than 48 hours, Bungie has generated almost $200,000 in revenue off of just one item. And this was back in August of 2020 for this singular emote. Their total sales off Eververse from the beginning of Witch Queen up until now could be well over $25 million, if not more. 
And again, this is just Eververse. This doesn't include any sales from anything else like DLCs or pre-orders. There are some comments stating that Bungie spends around $30 million a year for their employees, which sounds reasonable. Considering how big the company is and how Bungie is running multiple behind the scenes projects, Destiny related or not. But if Destiny went free to play with their seasons and every piece of content introduced with it was free and only monetized the yearly expansions at $40, they would still make a profit. In fact, they would make a surplus of profit due to how accessible Destiny 2 would be if it went full free to play and only monetized its yearly expansions at $40. Hell, if it went ahead and free to play every DLC, excluding Witch Queen, they would still make a profit. Bungie clearly knows how to market their game, so it's just a no-brainer that the game will rake in more money than it used to. Lightfall has already gotten a whole boatload of pre-orders as well, so just by announcing Lightfall, they've made a surplus of income. Also, I mean, when looking at the activities and game modes being introduced, it doesn't really look or sound expensive, it's just reused assets from previous levels, just adding extra environment textures to make it look new. I mean, look at the heist missions. It's literally going through the same environment on Europa, and then they just added an underground base that looks identical to that strike on Mars, with extra add-ons to the level. That doesn't sound expensive, does it? What, you're gonna tell me it costs 30 million to constantly reuse assets in these game modes throughout the year? You've gotta be kidding me. I've seen games that were passion projects look more creative and stunning than all of this. Not only is the content we get during the seasons rather pitiful now, I mean, to be fair, it's always been on a downward trend since Shadowkeep, we are literally paying for mediocrity throughout the year, only to receive something meaningful at the end, or rather, the beginning of the next content cycle. The content we get now has no purpose. It's just used to fill in time until the next major store or DLC drops. Nothing feels special anymore. Zero Hour, Whisper, Menagerie, Pit of Heresy, Last Word, Thorn, Izanagi, Jotun, they all felt meaningful to grind for. Meaningful content with quests, while basic, at least had a fundamental story to them. What the hell am I even doing here in this base in the middle of nowhere? Or why is this ship all infested? Why do I have to explore this? Even the seasonal quests and missions were interesting at some point, but all we're told to do now is just repeat the same game mode until next week, then do the same mission with different bosses, and repeat until the end. It's boring, it's lame, and it's lazy. From a structured standpoint, the seasons make sense, and I like the idea and concept having an overarching storyline being told through episodic stories each week. The execution, however, is complete ass, as they try to pad out content that realistically will maybe last a month tops into three months of drought that will fatigue players from power grind only to reset everyone's level in the name of grind. And grindmasters can't save the seasons either due to the ridiculous power grind requirement, so it leaves players feeling super burnt out. And on the topic of burnout, I think it's super clear that a lot of players are now done with Destiny. Just looking at the Steam player count says enough. This season's day one peaked around 120,000 players, while previous seasons had more than 200,000 players logged on. At the end of the day though, is this Bungie's fault? I mean, we let them get away with charging us $100 for a forced annual package. We let them get away with drip feeding us content in hopes the next season will be better. We let them get away with mediocre gameplay loops and activities. We let them get away with reusing assets and levels. We let them get away with everything. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Fool me three times. Well, I might as well go f*** myself. If you enjoy content like this and want to see more, be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.